Hey everyone, welcome back to The Quilted Story. My name is Kathleen and my channel is all about my cross stitch, my quilting, and my machine embroidery projects. I'm hoping that you will find something here today that will inspire you to start a new project or pull out one of your old whips and get a little progress on that. Now, if you've joined me here before in the past few videos, you know that my words for the 2024 calendar year are random act of kindness. I believe that no matter how small, any act of kindness is never wasted. So let's get started this, with this program with my March 2024 random act of kindness. This project I made for my daughter-in-law's mother. They're getting ready to go on a cruise and she needed a special bag to commemorate that cruise that they'll be taking. So I whipped up this cute tote. It's a real large tote and it has her name on the front, Janet. It's the flip-flops because it's going to be a Caribbean type of cruise, I think. Something like that. My daughter-in-law told me, but you know, I have a lot on my mind. <laughs> but that's okay. It turned out really cute. It does have a zipper across the top. And the pocket, of course, is not sewn shut. It's a very large design. It's approximately eight inches by nine and a half inches wide. And the design itself came from Applique Market. And it's like the flip-flop design, I think is what it's called. I really enjoy this um, particular design. I did it on my machine embroidery, or my embroidery machine, and it stitches up really nice. I will link that design down below and so that you can find it for yourself if you, if you um, own an embroidery machine and you would like to have this design. It comes in several sizes. The font is called Charlotte font, and it is a Stitchtopia design, and I will link their Etsy shop down below also. I do have like all the Stitchtopia Charlotte fonts in various sizes, so it comes in a lot of different sizes. Be sure you're checking out the sizes when you are going to purchase so that you get the sizes that you want for your embroidery machine. I really love the way that font, that particular font, stitches out. You will not be disappointed. So I'm hoping that Janet will love her new bag and let's move on to April 2024 in the next video. So that is my random act of kindness. And the next thing I want to show you before we get started with today's program is something that I actually made for myself. Can you believe it? I know, but sometimes you just have to. This is a super cute new wallet. Just made it for myself. It's got little frogs on it. They're on the riding scooters. Isn't it adorable? I just love this guy. So it's the same wallet that I showed in a previous video that I had made for a for one of my I think February 2024 random act of kindness. Here's the interior. Oops. Here's the interior of the wallet. Here's where all your little credit cards and ID cards, medical cards, whatever, go. And then you can slip your, your um, driver's license in here. And it's easily accessible and easily, vis you know, you can see it really easy because it does have a clear vinyl window. Now, on the back of the wallet, I do have a large zipper that goes across the back of the wallet. And that's for like your change and maybe if you want to put your store cards in there so you can easily um, access those without opening the wallet. As you can see, the wallet is secure with this large Velcro tab, okay? And then right inside the tab is a small little tab that you can put your phone in this pocket or you can put receipts in there or your checkbook or, you know, various things. Everybody uses their wallet in a different way. I designed these wallets, these smartphone wallets, back about 12, 14 years ago. And I used to have an Etsy shop where I sold them. I no longer do that anymore, but I still make them for gifts and for random act of kindness and for myself. So I finally made one for myself, a new one, even though I have dozens of them. 
I made myself a new one because I got a new purse and I wanted to have a new wallet for my new purse. So that was what I made for myself this month. Now, today's program is really going to be about, can you guess? It's going to be about all about my Valentine um, decor decorations that I've made with either my sewing machine or my embroidery machine and give you a little bit of inspiration of how you can decorate for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is a hard holiday to decorate for because it is a short holiday. So what I do is as soon as I get all my Christmas decorations packed up and put away, I go ahead and decorate for Valentine's Day sometime in the early part of January. And I leave it up until usually the first part of March, which then I switch it out for the Easter spring holiday. And that way, you know, when you take all your Christmas decorations down and you put them away, your house can seem a little empty. And so I felt like I needed that, you know, that that little bit of accessories in my house decorating um, to kind of hold me over until I get into like the spring and Easter where people tend to decorate a little bit more. So I've made a few things over the years. I usually try to add a couple of new things every year to kind of, you know, grow my stash of Valentine decorations. And that's what I'm gonna show you here today. Some of them are quilting items and some of them are machine embroidery items. But either way, a lot of my projects I'm gonna show you here today can be used to finish off a cross stitch project. Maybe you're cross stitching a Valentine design and you can finish it the way I finished my, say my machine embroidery designs. So don't be afraid to switch it up with what you're making, but maybe apply the way I finished some of my items. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna start with, let's start with the thing in the back, because that's the biggest. This is my window that I have, that I, we've talked about previously before in some of my videos. These are little individual windows and they're applique hearts. What I did was I made a patchwork of um, Valentine fabrics, all from the same line so that they kind of go together. Well, they do go together. And then I, after I made a patchwork, I got a, made a template of a heart you know, a pattern. And then I traced it out onto it and I then right sides it together with a piece of fusible interfacing so that when I turned that inner, I sewed all the way around the heart. And then when I turned the heart right side out, that fusible part would be on the back side of the heart. And so I could fuse it directly onto that white fabric. Let's see if I can point to it, that white fabric. And then I just machine stitched it in place. I did fuse it first, but then I machine stitched it in place to make it permanent. And then I mounted it on foam core boards and put it in my frame. Each one of those are individual little um, squares. And I love the way it turned out because it looks really pretty on the wall and it looks really nice in that white distressed frame. It's like a window frame. I did get the window frame from Hobby Lobby. It also comes in black and they still sell it because I just saw it at Hobby Lobby a couple of weeks ago. It's back in their home decor, like where they sell home decor items. And I do believe it, it says home decor on the back of, so, you know, wait for a sale. Usually it goes on sale for like half off. And that's the time to, to grab one. But like I, I had said earlier, it does come in black also. So if you're looking for one for maybe Halloween, that would be great. You know, or maybe your, your home is decorated in the farmhouse style and that black one might be better for you, a better fit. So that one was a lot of fun to make. I hang that every year at Valentine's Day. Well, actually, like I said, first part of January all the way to the first of March. And it looks really nice in my foyer. I have it hanging in my foyer, foyer above my 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 uh, bench that I have sitting there. Now, speaking of my bench, because this sits right in front of that frame, I made two really cute pillows. Let me go back a little bit. This is my Scrappy Hearts. It's a paper pieced design. 
and the pattern for the block is available in my Etsy shop. I'll link that down below if you're interested. And I made it into a cute pillow. This is a 20 by 20 pillow. And I used an all over print on the back side. I did put a zipper across the top so I can once again take that pillow form out and just replace the cover because I do have seasonal covers. So that one's called Patchwork Valentine Hearts. And it was a lot of fun to make. And then I, I also bound it. I usually bind my pillows because I like the way it looks and it frames out the pillow nicely. So that is Scrappy Hearts. All right, let me put that down there. The second pillow that I made is another pattern that I designed. And it is part of my Won't You Be My Neighbor. And it's the Won't You Be My Neighbor is part of the house's that's the house paper piece design. And this one's called Valentine Village because it does have some heart applique. This pattern for the block and the heart applique are available in my Etsy shop. I'll link that down below. I made this pillow using the same line of fabrics that I made the other pillow with. I used the same fabric on the back with a zipper across the top so I could remove the pillow form easily and store these pillow covers, you know, very easily because they're flat and you're not trying to store, you know, 9 million of these pillow forms, which gets a little bulky. Once again, I did frame it with a, a binding, the same fabric that I used for the other one. Turned out really nice. I'm really happy with the way these two, let me put them together so you can see them. The way the two of these look together on my bench um, in my foyer and they sit on a bench that's right below that white window frame that's behind me. So that's a really pretty, you know, it all goes together. I use the same line of fabrics and um, it, it all goes really nicely together. And so everything is kind of cohesive in the way it looks. Now, one more thing that I made with that very same line of fabric, I'm hoping you'll be able to see this. This is a window frame that, here, let me go back a little bit, that I bought. I bought the frame and it has these little metal clips on them. There's nine spots for, for you to put something on. And I switched this out. This actually hangs in my master bedroom. And you see these little hooks? You can actually clip something on them or just hang something on them. And as you can see, I just made some little, almost like paper hearts, but they are made out of fabric and they're patchwork. And I just pinked around the outside edge to give it a, you know, more, um, you know, like kind of like a paper doll type of Valentine hearts look, you know, it's a little bit different, but I really like it. That's what I'm hanging on there for Valentine's day. I do switch this out with different themes like at Christmas I have stockings and um, I have different you know different items for the different holidays throughout the year so I'm hoping you're going to be able to see that let me get a close-up picture if you go to my Instagram you can see this frame when it's sitting flat and I'm not trying to hold it and all the hearts are going crazy wackadoodle you know what I mean <laughs> it's it's not easy to show things sometimes on YouTube, right? But if you go to my Instagram, there's a really nice standstill picture of that. And so you can see it in more detail when it's sitting flat. And then, you know, the hearts aren't moving when I'm trying to hold that thing up like, like today. So that's another item that I made. And that's just simple, you know, patchwork. I took a heart template. I drew around it. And then I put a backing on it. I put batting in between and I stitched all a straight stitch around the heart. And then I just pinked it out and cut it with pinking shears. So if you have a pair of pinking shears, you can use that. If not, if you don't have a pair of pinking shears, just use your regular scissors. Nobody's ever going to be the wiser. So um, don't feel you feel, don't feel like you have to go out and buy a pair of pinking shears just to make those hearts because that isn't the case. I find that tools are great, but you can accumulate them over time. You don't have to have them all at once. That's my rule of thumb. But, you know, everybody do themselves. Everybody do you, you know, whatever. Okay. Now, 
the next couple items that I made from the very same line, let me show you, let me go over here and get them, is I had, I have a coffee table that I wanted to make something for, and of course my kitchen table. And the kitchen table, the first thing I made was I made a set of four patchwork placemats. And these patchwork placemats are a class that I wrote up and, did, and taught back in, oh gosh, I probably taught this class over in the past 20 years, I probably taught it about um, five or six dozen times in a bunch of different quilt shops. It's just a simple patchwork made up using fat quarters. I just love it. And this way you can use like a line of fabrics and it looks really cute on your kitchen table. I did put binding on it, as you can see. I like to bind my placemats also. And you know, these smaller projects, it's a great way to practice your binding by making placemats or, you know, doing a pillow. And then that way you, you kind of get it embedded in your mind how binding works. So once you start doing it and you do it multiple times over and over, you really do learn how to do binding and you learn how to do it well. So that's just, I made a set of four of these. These sit on my kitchen table. I love them and they wash great. Now, one thing that I tell um, my students when I'm teaching that particular class, when I make placemats, instead of using just regular batting, like 100% cotton batting or something like that, I like to use um, an item called Thermalom and it's made by Pellon and it's fusible. And the reason why I like to use it is because when you fuse it, like I did on this placement, for this placement, when you fuse it, it firms up the item. So it makes it more slight, more stiff, you know what, what I mean? Um, and then when I wash these placemats, say they get dirty because they're placemats, they're gonna get dirty. When they get dirty, I wash them you know, by themselves, I usually hang them dry and then I repress them because when I repress on the fabric through that thermalum uh, by Pellon, that interfacing that's fusible, it reaffirms the body of the placemat. These placemats here that I'm showing you here today have been laundered dozens of times and look how nice they, they come out you know, from the washer. And like I said, I hang them dry and I do repress them to reaffirm the stabilizer, which is the Pellon Thermalum interfacing. It's kind of like a lofty, um, thick batting type of item. And you can get it at Joann's. I usually buy mine by the bolt. You can get it at Joann's. I do believe you can get it at Hobby Lobby. And you could probably buy it on, you know, online and various places. But the one I use is the Pellon and it is called Thermalom. It's a little bit thicker. They make an item called fusible fleece. And this is a fusible fleece, but the Thermalom fusible fleece is actually thicker. So that's why I use that for my placemats. I also use it for this little mat that I made for one of my little end tables. I put this lamp or I put this on my end table and then I have like, I'll show you in a minute what I have sitting on top of it. But this is just a simple little two patch patchwork that I did using up my scraps, use the same fabric for the back side. And I also bound this one with the same fabric and simple quilting, just lines, you know, nothing real fancy. But I like it because all of this stuff goes together from my frame, my pillows, my placemat, and also my table runner. I made a big table runner out of this two patch patchwork. Two strips is what it is. And this actually sits on my coffee table. And then I have like a little decoration in the center of it. And this turned out really cute. I used that same fusible fleece thermalom that I used on the other two items. I also bound it just like I did with the other two. And I really like it. It's just simple straight line quilting. And on the back, I didn't have a big enough piece for the back. So I pieced it with these little 
fabric with the fabric that had little lips on it. It's really, really cute. I just put that down the center because my fabric, I didn't have a big enough piece. So I just added that, made the piece big enough. It's on the back side. It's totally okay to piece your backs for your quilts, your table runners, your wall hangings, anything that you make, you can piece the backs if you need to, because you need to have one solid piece. So you can piece them together and make it large enough for your project. Now, the next item that I made, let's see, one more quilty thing. Let me show you that. Okay. I made a ton of these yo-yos in reds and whites, and I was going to make a project with them. I know, it's hard to believe. I was going to make a project with them. I had this great idea. And I got bored with it. So I put all of my yo-yos that I made and I put them in this glass jar. And doesn't, doesn't it look great? I mean, it's perfect for Valentine's Day. And it's just random, you know, random fabrics that I had for my red and white stash in my fabrics on my shelf. And I set it on top of this mat, this small little square mat. I set it on there on a table. I have a little antique table in my front room that I set it on. And I just love it because it's just, it's kind of just, it's like a really pretty home decor and it's all yo-yos. I don't know how many there are in here, but I just, you know, I had a bag of them. I, you know, I threw them in there and I just love the way it looks through this clear glass. So that's a great way to Use your yo-yos that maybe you made and, you know, you don't have a plan for them. This could be any color. You could do it to match your master bedroom or your living room, or you could do them all in. Wouldn't it be gorgeous to do them all in red, white, and blue and do a patriotic theme? That would be fabulous. So I just love my jar of yo-yos. I use that little yo-yo maker that you can get at Spy Clover. I'll see if I can find it and link it down below. That's what I use to make my yo-yos. Um, you don't have to. There's thousands of ways to make yo-yos. And there are all kinds of YouTube videos on how to make yo-yos. So you can search it on YouTube also. But this is a really pretty way to display them. When you don't want to, you know, you make all the yo-yos and then you're saying, oh gosh, now what am I going to do? <laughs> So this is my life, right? Okay, so that's a great way to use your yo-yos. So that's the last thing in my quilty items or sewing quilty. Oh no, wait a minute, got one more thing. This is a patchwork heart that I made. I have it clipped on this, it's like a little frame. I think I got it like at Home Goods. It's got like a little metal clip up here. And this is just a patchwork heart that I that I made on my sewing machine, and then I cut the heart out. I did a patchwork, almost like a log cabin patchwork, and then I cut the heart out, and I also bound it, just because I wanted that, you know, that framed look on that. I love the way this turned out. Now, I did post these on my Instagram. I also did one in pink, and I didn't bring that one today, but I do have it on my Instagram, so if you want to see it done in the pink version, it's be, it's the same it's the same heart. It's just done in pinks, so it's really really cute. You could use it as a mat to you know put a candle on or something if you wanted to, or I just like the way it's hanging on this frame. So I have this in my one of my little um, Valentine vignettes in my house, and that I just really love it. There's just something about patchwork that makes me smile. You know I'm a quilter, so doesn't take much. So that's another way to use up your scraps. Those are all scraps I pulled out of my stash. So maybe give that a try. That sounds like fun, right? Now, the next items are machine embroidery items that I did with my embroidery machine. And of course, if you watched any of my past videos, you know that I make towels for my kitchen stove front and my dishwasher front for every holiday. This is one that I made. Oh gosh. I actually wrote a tutorial on how to do this for when I used to work for Baby K's appliques. And this is her design, but she sold her business to Gemini Red Designs. 
So I'll link that down below. You can still get this. And the font is also from Gemini Red. It was originally a um, baby case, appliques design. And now it's all under the umbrella of Gemini Red. It's stitched up beautifully. I love the, the multiple hearts and I use a different fabric for each one of the hearts. And it looks just, it looks really pretty on my stove front. So I'm real happy with that. These, you know, kitchen towels are easy gifts to make with your embroidery machine, no matter what kind of embroidery machine you have, because it is a flat bed design, which means you never have to worry about what's happening on the back side, like you do with a garment. A garment has a back to it, you know, like the back of the shirt. And so you're, if you don't have a free arm, it's a little bit trickier to get it on your hoop and in your embroidery machine. But with a flat item, like a kitchen towel, you can do it very easily. So, you know, think about that. If you have an embroidery machine and you need to get started on some projects, start out with some kitchen towels. You'll be really happy. You can do them for every holiday season. You can make up sets and give them as gifts. Um, there's just so many things you can do with a kitchen towel. Um, you can buy these towels online on Amazon. You can get them at department stores. You know, um, I don't know if I've ever seen them. I guess I have seen them at Hobby Lobby, but like, you know, Target, Walmart, any of those stores, TJ Maxx, Home Goods. And I just look for ones that are, you know, more plain, you know, um, just so that the design itself that you put on will pop off of it. So think about that. They're very easy to make. I love them. They are quick to make. And I'm real happy with the outcome of them. The only problem with kitchen decorated kitchen towels is that you got to kind of tell your gift recipient not to use it as a hand towel because I wouldn't want to launder that, you know, every week with my regular laundry, you know, over and over and over because it's not going to look as nice. But there again, if you do launder it because, you know, it will get dirty from just sitting on your stove front, you can just press it really well and you'll reaffirm the design all over again, you know, to make it flat and make it look nice. So, but I still wouldn't use it as a, you know, towel that you wiped your hands on. It's more of a decorative thing. So, but that's up to you. You know, everybody, you know, everybody does something different. So you do you. That's what I say. Okay. The next item that I made with my embroidery machine is this cute little design and it's a sweet little Valentine cupcake. And I mounted it on this, it's kind of like a chunky, it was like a chunky little um, uh, block that I got at Hobby Lobby. It, it had some kind of words on it. I don't know. I think it was for spring. And it only cost me like a couple dollars because I got it half off. And then I mounted a piece of Valentine fabric on a piece of sticky board. That's the very first one. And the second one is the design I applicated on a piece of 25 count opalescent Lugana. And I did it through a piece of regular 100% cotton batting so that it gave it, it the cotton batting served two pur purposes. It gave it the stabilization that it needed during the embroidery process, and it also gave it a finished poofy look. As you can see, it has a little bit, you know, of a dimension to it. And then I just double mounted it. I added these little hearts across the bottom, a simple bow. And as you can see, Kathleen's not really great at the bows, but I'm okay. I cinched it up in the center and added this button to hide its multitude of sins. And voila. You could use this exact same idea of finishing with a really pretty um, cross stitch that was a Valentine cross stitch or, you know, a patriotic one. Just put stars down here, star buttons down here. But you could use the same idea for finishing that I have used with my machine embroidery designs. You can adapt those for all cross stitch designs too. So when you look at my my projects that I've done, don't think about it as oh gee that's that's a machine embroidery project. I can't do that because I don't have uh, an embroidery machine. But if you cross stitch, you can finish your items the exact same way. It's just 
a little bit different medium. You know, this has been applique on with my embroidery machine and you're cross stitching a project on Ada cloth or linen or Lugana or one of those type of fabrics. Basically, it's the same thing. So feel free to use any of my ideas to finish up one of your projects that you got going. Okay, now, oh, and that design is actually from a designer that I don't believe is in business anymore. It was called Just Peachy Applique, but I, I did a little search for her this morning and I couldn't find, she wasn't active anymore. So, but I will put it down below that it was called Just Peachy Applique, just in case, you know, I missed it or, you know, I just didn't find it for myself. But I really do, it did stitch up really nice. And as you can see, I use that white mirror glitter vinyl on the cupcake to give it a little bit of shine. Okay, the next item that I made with my embroidery machine also can be used with a cross stitch project that you finished, and that is my little love frog. And I mounted him, double mounted him on a piece, two pieces of sticky board. I embroidery applique him using my machine embroidery, and I did it with that 25 count opalescent Lugana through a piece of Forming Natural Batting. And then I double mounted it, also the same Valentine fabric as the as the back mount, and then a simple little bow across the top with a button to finish the center. Once again, hides that multitude of sin and what's going on with that bow. Usually my bows don't look so great in the middle, so I'm always trying to cover them up with a button or you know <laughs> a little design or a little maybe a little trinket you get at Hobby Lobby back in the craft section. It's a great way to hide it. And then this little metal stand was actually from Hobby Lobby in the spring department. And it's a, it's a magnet board. And then I can pop this guy off. And I have other designs that I pop in here that are all the same size. The other one that I'll show you at Easter is actually a cross stitch design. So you can see that this one stand uses I use it for a lot of different holidays by just popping it off. I use the method that basically um, Priscilla and Chelsea um, use from stitching with the housewives by putting magnets on the back. I like to do that with stuff like this if I want to if I know I'm gonna reuse this frame. I'll do I'll get one frame and then just put those magnets on and that helps me be able to use the same frame you know, over and over. One is killing a lot of birds with one stone. One, one item that you're buying for finishing, one item to store, one item to pay for, and then you can make multiple different holiday um, little designs that you magnet on and take them off and store just that little flat, which is so much easier than storing, you know, two dozen of these things, right? Now, I like I said, I got that at Hobby Lobby. It did come in like a kind of like a vintagey looking cream color and I didn't particularly care for it. So I had my husband go and take it outside and spray paint it white. So I just, I just like the way it looks in the white because I do tend to use in these kind of designs for my Valentine's and for like my Easter stuff, I use, I tend to use a lot of lighter fabrics. So I thought the white would be best. Really like that. Once again, this design is my froggy Valentine, and he originally is a design by Itch to Stitch. I used to be a design firm um, uh, tester. I used to test all their designs, um, and the business was sold to Designs by Juju, so you can still get this design. And the font is also from Itch to Stitch. Um, and I will link that down below and it is under the umbrella of designs by Juju. You can still get Christie's designs. They are fabulous. You will not be disappointed in any designs that once belonged to itch to stitch. So check that out. I'll link that down below so you can find it really easily. Now the next item that I made with my embroidery machine was also um, a blog that I wrote, a little tutorial on how to make a Valentine card using your embroidery machine. As you can see, this is like a, a little greeting card. 
and this cute little simple design was done by Teresa from Baby K's Designs. And now her business has been sold to Gemini Red. I will link that down below. It was a quick stitch with my embroidery machine. Once again, it was a flat item. I did stitch it through. What I did was I took a piece of fabric, okay, and I fused it to a piece of buckram. Buckram is, a, is an interfacing that's stiff and it's used in draperies and I fused it to the fabric is fused directly onto that buckram then I machine embroidered it because this is all embroidery there's no applique and then I cut it out just slightly smaller than the size of my card and I, I, I put it on the card and I sewed right through it so if you can see I actually sewed this little panel right onto the front of my card. Very simple, a great way, again, to use your embroidery machine, making simple gifts. You can make one for any holiday. I just happened to do mine in Valentine's. I just thought it was cute. So and I will link this design down below. And the font is also from Gemini Red, which used to be Baby Case Appliques. You will be really happy with anything that comes from that design firm. Now, let's see on my table, what do I have left? Okay, I have one more machine embroidery project. It's another pillow. You know, I could make thousands of pillows and pillow wraps and pillow covers and never have enough, right? So I've started spilling it over and I give them as gifts and stuff because I just love making a pillow. And I think it's because I can get that quilty bug going and or my machine embroidery bug going without making a whole quilt or without making a really large embroidery project. So this is what I did. I made another pillow wrap. This was also a tutorial that I wrote for Baby Case appliques back, oh, probably about four years ago, five years ago, before she sold her business. And it says, together is my favorite place to be. We merged these two fonts with the heart. I merged them together using my Embrilliance software for my embroidery machine. I saved it. I sent it to the stick of my embroidery machine and then put the stick in my embroidery machine and ran the design. Now, this is that same pillow that I showed on my last video. Uh, well, not my, maybe not last video, but a couple videos ago where I had the Christmas one that said Believe on it. This is the same pillow cover. And then I just made another one of those wraps. And I showed you that in that Christmas video. And then that way, I'm just storing these wraps. These wraps hook on with a piece of Velcro on the back side. And they're very small to store. So I'm just, I have one pillow with a pillow cover and then I make a bunch of different wraps. You're gonna see more wraps as I make videos. I make them for all the holidays. And I love them because like if you were making a gift for somebody, you could buy one pillow, one pillow cover and make several different wraps that you could give them and it would be cost effective and it would be easy for your recipient to store. It's a great way to make kind of like a multiple gift with one idea. So there again, that's called, I actually named this tutorial, It's a Wrap. You know, pun on words. <laughs> Okay, so that one turned out really, really cute. And I do, when I machine applique or embroider on, when I make this um, pillow wrap, I embroider or applique it right through a piece of the warm and natural batting because I'm using that warm and natural batting as my stabilizer because it stays in, it keeps the item and all the embroidery part flat, no puckering. It's just the way to go when it's something like this, like a pillow front or um, a pillow wrap, even with your, um, your placemats or any kind of mat that you might want to make. Think about that, using your warm and natural batting as your stabilizer on your frame when you're doing machine embroidery.
So just a little rule of thumb. If you have any questions about anything that I show you here today, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Ask any question that you would like. And I, I answer every question that is sent to me through my YouTube channel. So do not hesitate to ask questions. I love questions. I love sharing what I know how to do and hopefully it'll help you with your project or your upcoming project. And that's what it's all about, learning from one another. Now, I have one more item that I wanna show you that I made for myself because I forgot about that. You know, it sounds like I'm kind of greedy, aren't I? <laughs> like I make a lot of things for myself. But you know what? Sometimes you have to make that smile on your face. Now, everybody knows that Kathleen makes the cross stitch project folders. And this one is my Valentine one. I just love this fabric. It's probably one of my favorite fabrics that I have in my stash. I could have had three bolts of this and not had enough. But inside... As you can see, I have the zipper placket with the vinyl. Here, let me unzip that. It's a pocket. You can put your cross stitch. It has a liner in it, so you can put something in front and something in back. And then it zips shut. This size is perfect for the five by seven design cards. Okay, so there's one pocket in the front. And then on the other side, there's another pocket. It's the exact same thing. And then the item in the center is actually a floss keeper. It actually holds your floss and organizes your floss. And your needle gets to be parked here on the little wool felt item. And like if you're, you know, you start your floss and you have some left over, I twine it around my finger and then I just stick it on this little floss keeper. And then that way it sticks to it because it's fusible fleece. And I snap that shut. And then I snap the whole thing shut three snaps across the side here and keeps everything secure. And so like my smaller projects, I like to organize them in my project notions folder. Now I do make these in a larger one that holds the full size booklets and leaflets which I call that my project keeper. So it is larger, but, and I do drop these occasionally in my Etsy shop for sale. Um, if you wanna know when the next drop is, be sure to follow me on Instagram because I'll announce them there saying when they'll be dropped in my Etsy shop. Now, every once in a while, I'll throw four or five things in there and not really announce it just to kind of, you know, little surprise, see who can grab it first because they do sell out quickly. So I like to reward those people who watch my, my um, Etsy shop by doing that periodically. So that's my Valentine one and I did make it for myself. Um, I do believe I have a few more of these that I'm going to be dropping, you know, so if you still need something to organize your Valentine projects, there should be one in my shop soon. Now, all those projects that I made, including this guy behind me, I wanted to show you what I do with my leftover fabric scraps so I can go back to it if I decide to make something else with that same line in the future. And it's called a plastic shoe box. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I like to organize leftover scraps in plastic containers. These are only like a dollar, dollar 25 at the department store. They're inexpensive. And what I did was I put all of my leftover fabrics from that line in this box. And then I even have some leftover blocks that I made. I stick those in there in case I come up with something else to make with them. Those are just my extra ones. I think I use them for photography purposes, but I just keep them in the shoe box. It has a nice lid. It snaps shut and everything stays on. Then I just put this whole thing on my shelf. And then that way, if I decide I want to make something using Valentine fabrics that I have used before, I have it all at my fingertips and I'm not digging through a drawer or a box or, you know, something where I've stuck it on the corner of my work table or whatever. And then that way, 
they're all together and I don't use them for something else and then find, oh shoot, I wish I had a little bit more of that heart fabric so I could make, you know, this, that, or the other. So that's a way to organize. It was, it started out as a fat quarter bundle and um, it was from a, a full line that I bought probably about five or six years ago. So it's not available anymore, but you, they make Valentine fabrics all the time. So if you get a fat quarter bundle, stick it in a shoe box and then make your projects from that bundle. And you'll always be happy with the outcome because all the fabrics go together because they came from the same line. That's just my rule of thumb that I use and maybe it'll be helpful for you too. Now, that's how I organize that. So let's see, the last thing I have are just a couple things that I consider my haul. And the first one is something I happen to be lurking on the internet and I found these this from an older line. It's called Gnomes in Love and it's a Riley Blake. I'm looking to see. And I bought two jelly rolls because they were having like a sale. I got them really inexpensive. I have no idea what I'm doing with it, but it's almost identical in the color of reds and pinks as my other stuff that I made. So I thought, you know, I could probably blend that right in. So I picked up two jelly rolls, which are 40 strips from the full line. And this is a Riley Blake design, Gnomes in Love is what it's called. I'll link that down below. I don't know if it's still available because I think this is an older line, but you still might be able to find it like on Etsy or a shop that maybe still has some jelly rolls or some layer cakes or some of the, um, the pre-cuts. So don't be afraid to look for the older lines because a lot of times they discount them. So I, like I said, I went ahead and I picked up two of those to add to my stash. I know it's hard to believe, but I did. <laughs> I could, so I did. Um, and now the next item that I have is something that my sister-in-law, Sue, she's so sweet. She loves to hunt for vintage items. And she knows that I collect um, the Fenton white glass and the Silvercrest um, Fenton. And she found this Fenton bowl. It's a heart shape. I'm hoping you can see that it's heart shaped. I've got these little heart like candy things. They look like candy, but they're not candy. So don't eat them. I got, they came in a bag at Hobby Lobby and it's really, it's a heart shaped candy bowl. I just love it because it has this little handle and it has that ruffled edge here. She saw that and snagged it for me. Wasn't that sweet? I just love it. And so I, like I said, I found these hearts at Hobby Lobby in a bag. You buy, I think they still have them. Um, every Valentine's, I've, I've gotten these a couple years in a row because I tend to pick up another couple bags every year because I find more and more things to put, you know, put them in. And I just have this sitting on my coffee table. And, and my husband did say to me, uh, I can't eat those, right? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, because usually I have like a little bowl of candy. I know it's hard to believe. I usually have like a little bowl of sweets or something, you know, in one of my little vintage dishes or something next to our chairs in the family room. And so he's used to that and he saw these and he thought they were like, you know, store for candies or something. But he was slightly disappointed when he picked one up and realized it was not candy. So <laughs> he'll have to get over it, right? He, he, he's going to survive, I'm sure. Okay, so this is this cute little vintage Fenton glass. This isn't, this isn't the Silver Crest. The Silver Crest has a clear um, ruffled edge, and I do have pieces of that, but this one is just like a you know plain white, and it has the hobnail on the side. I just love it because it's just, there's just something about the shape of it, I think, that just makes you happy, happy, happy. And I have seen this dish. In, in like antique stores in different sizes. So I'll have to be out the hunt for that. So that's what, that's a vintage find that my sister's, sister-in-law Sue found me. Um, I think it was last summer she found it and um, gave it to me when we were in Ohio in October. I just love it. Thank you so much, Sue. I love it. Um, okay, now I think that's it, girls. 
Then guys, everybody who's watching, anybody, doesn't matter. Um, I think that's it for today. Now, I'm hoping that um, you did see something here today that might have inspired you in some way. And I really thank you for joining me here at The Quilted Story. And I'm hoping that maybe you'll follow me on Instagram. I'll link that down below. Maybe give me a thumbs up and a like. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you for all those who have subscribed to my channel. I really appreciate it. But I'm hoping that if people come back to see my videos that I'll be more able to be seen like in the search part of YouTube and in Instagram because people have subscribed. So like I said, that's about it. But in the meantime, happy stitching, happy quilting, and we're going to see you here next time at The Quilted Story. Thank you very much. Bye for now.